On May 12, 1862, the Confederate steamer CSS Planter docks at Charleston Harbor. Its three white officers, led by Captain Relier, trust their eight enslaved crew members and disembark for the evening. Unbeknownst to them, their wheelman, Robert Smalls, seizes the opportunity. Born into slavery, Robert strives to keep his family united and escape the horrors of separation. Disguised under the captain's hat, he skillfully guides the ship from the dock with the help of fellow slaves. Robert's intimate knowledge of Charleston Harbor, gained through years of dock work, earns him the role of trusted pilot for the officers. After collecting his family and fellow slaves, the ship navigates toward the Union blockade, inching closer to freedom. Robert deftly communicates with coded hand signals at Confederate checkpoints, shielded by the captain's hat and the forgiving early dawn light. The ship eventually reaches the Union blockade, where Robert's wife signals surrender with a white bedsheet, securing liberty for the 17 individuals on board. His courageous feat and persuasive influence played a role in President Abraham Lincoln's decision to integrate African-American soldiers into the Union Army. On April 8, 1942, a group of Polish soldiers stumbled upon a Syrian brown bear cub, left orphaned by hunters. The plea of a refugee led a lieutenant to acquire the cub using an unusual currency, Persian coins, a Swiss army knife, beef, and chocolate. Named Wojtek, loosely translating to Happy Warrior, the bear became an unexpected member of the Polish Second Transport Company. Beyond his ability to salute, Wojtek displayed a knack for turning on showers, inadvertently causing water shortages. He endeared himself to the troops by mimicking their behavior, even being trained to hoist new recruits by their boots to jestingly devour them. His morning started with coffee, and he was not averse to smoking and eating cigarettes. Enlisted as a private to bypass restrictions for animal transport, he shared living quarters with the soldiers. His crowning moment came at the Battle of Monte Cassino, reportedly moving heavy crates of ammunition and earning a promotion. The regiment immortalized him in their emblem, and post-war Wojtek found a home in Scotland, and eventually settled in Edinburgh Zoo in 1947. Former Polish soldiers paid visits, playfully tossing cigarettes into his enclosure. How Attila the Hun waged two wars over a girl. In the spring of 450, Attila, ruler of the Huns, invaded Gaul. Attila had a rather peculiar motivation, to secure a wife for himself. This wife-to-be was Honoria, the sister of Valentinian III, emperor of Western Rome. Honoria, seeking to escape her brother's plans of marrying her off to a Roman aristocrat, devised a cunning plan. She sent a ring to Attila, beseeching his assistance in breaking free from the betrothal. Attila interpreted this as a marriage proposal, and he promptly declared her as his newest bride. Additionally, he laid claim to half of the Western Roman Empire as her dowry. While Honoria later denied having any such intentions, her brother, furious at her scheming, contemplated sending her to Attila as a way to placate the Hun leader. Ultimately, he decided to proceed with the original plan of marrying her off to the Roman aristocrat. However, Attila was not one to give up easily. In the name of Honoria, he launched his next two military campaigns, determined to assert his claim and secure her as his wife. How Genghis Khan's greatest soldier was once his enemy. Genghis Khan is known to have possessed a discerning eye for talent, choosing to promote his officers based on their skill and experience rather than their ancestry or previous allegiances. One remarkable act showcasing his belief in meritocracy occurred during a battle in 1201 against a rival tribe. In the midst of the conflict, an arrow struck the Khan's horse, nearly claiming his life. When he later interrogated the imprisoned soldiers to identify the responsible archer, one courageous soldier admitted his action. Impressed by the archer's audacity, Genghis Khan appointed him an officer in his army and bestowed upon him the nickname Jev, meaning arrow, in honor of their first encounter on the battlefield. Alongside the renowned general Subutai, Jev would go on to become one of the Mongols' most exceptional field commanders during their expansive conquests across Asia and Europe. This instance demonstrated the Khan's firm commitment to recognizing and nurturing talent, regardless of background, and highlighting the pivotal role merit played in shaping the Mongols' success in their military campaigns. In World War II, the United States had a secret division, the Ghost Army, only revealed in 1996. It had 1,100 non-soldier members, artists, sound engineers, and set designers. Their task? Tricking the German army into thinking there were large troops and equipment where none existed. The Ghost Army specialized in creating convincing multimedia illusions. Using creativity, they simulated 30,000 troops and numerous tanks on the front lines. Artists and designers crafted lifelike inflatable tanks, cannons, trucks, and planes. Massive speakers audible 15 miles away broadcasted recordings of tank units and soldier camps. Skilled radio operators crafted fake messages, mimicking telegraph operators. One night, a corporal on guard noticed two Frenchmen on bicycles who had somehow gotten past the perimeter. They watched in wonder as four GIs seemingly effortlessly turned a 40-ton tank by hand. The corporal, thinking quickly, remarked, American soldiers are very strong. These Ghost Army tactics proved highly effective, with German records revealing they were deceived, hook, line, and sinker. 